I have a question. Who was the first documented purse surgeon to fix a visceral artery aneurysm? You win this if you get the right answer. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. You were in a building named after him yesterday. Yes, who said that? <laughs> okay. Is it, did you mean to throw it to him? <laughs> <laughs> that is impressive. Thank you. Yes. Oops. Um, yes. The bakey. All right, so, um, so in brief, the most common visceral artery aneurysm is splenic followed by hepatic um, and then the other visceral arteries. I think I have renal artery aneurysms on here. Um, notice that there is a difference between outcomes between true aneurysms and pseudo aneurysms, with pseudo aneurysms rupturing at a much higher rate. So, if anyone presents with bleeding in a pseudo aneurysm, it, this is an urgent procedure. It's not something you can delay and put off next week or the following week because uh, rupture, especially in the visceral arteries, can be catastrophic. Um, let's see. Um, actually, I'm just going to go over this very briefly. I think the take-home points for splenic artery aneurysms is that they are the most common, um, more commonly in female. Um, Although there's a history about it happening more common in pregnant female, there really isn't much evidence about that. Um, and, and there is no correlation between calcification and rupture rate. So I think that the main thing is um, we used to fix anything over two centimeters, particularly if it was calcified, but all of that has changed. And with the advent of endovascular therapy, it's a lot easier to repair um, artery aneurysms, visceral artery aneurysms than it was in the, in the open day era. Um, so splenic artery aneurysms do have that classic um, double rupture, um, and depending on where the splenic artery aneurysm is, is how you're going to repair them. So if they're proximally, you could, if you're going to do an open operation, you can just ligate it and excise it. If it's distally, you include the spleen. With endovascular repair, um, it's coiling, coil embolization, stenting. I think it's pretty basic now. Hepatic artery aneurysms um, are the second most common visceral artery aneurysms, and treatment really depends on whether it's in the common hepatic or in the proper hepatic. So if you remember, the common hepatic is common to the GDA and the rest of the hepatic artery. So if the GDA is preserved, you can safely ligate the artery, although nowadays we tend to stent them. If the GDA is not preserved, then you're going to have to um, revascularize around it. Um, so, in terms of operative repair, so, so the common hepatic artery ligation is fine if you have the GDA, proper hepatic, so that's the main branch going to the right and left hepatic arteries. Obviously, that has to be preserved and reconstructed, and anything in the right and left depends on the um, hepatic function of the liver. Um, and intrahepatic are coiled. CELEC artery aneurysms are rare, um, but when they do occur, um, they do need to be repaired, most commonly in men and uh, uh, multiple etiologies, including collagen vascular disease, trauma, and infection. So, uh, because they of their of their location, difficult area to reach in a, an emergency, most people would recommend fixing them in the elective setting if someone presents with one. Um, and. Generally, the repair is indicated over one and a half, two centimeters. Um, and then uh, SMA aneurysms, we know that they're associated with infection. In the olden days, it was um, well, IV drug use, but we see it more commonly now with people with endocarditis, also in the IV drug users. And, the, and these, because of their uh, location and if they rupture or bleed, um, small bowel ischemia is life-threatening. These need to be repaired. Um, so you're going to get this all again tomorrow. I'm sorry. So pancreatic or duodenal, gastroduodenal artery aneurysms. Most of these are um, in the setting of that we see in the setting of alcohol use, chronic pancreatitis, 
we're in the setting of, of common, common, well, celiac artery occlusion where you have a lot of pressure in the SMA and, and around the GDA. So these are, if, if these, if someone presents with a, a rupture in any of these branches, these, are, this is an emergency or an urgent procedure. You can't put it off electively. And you do see them um, in the setting of median arc ligament syndrome and, like I said, celiac artery stenosis. Um, let's see, gastric and gastroepiploic aneurysms are very rare. Um, etiology is degenerative, traumatic, and inflammatory, um, and most commonly in elderly men. So these go to the small bowel, so removing these often does require removal of some small bowel. You can't just go in there and coral embolize them because they will take out the um, perfusion to part of the small bowel. And the same thing with jejunal early on colic artery aneurysms, exceedingly rare. Um, IMA aneurysms are the most uncommon, but if, they, if you do see them, these also require removal of parts of the small bowel as well. And then, finally, renal artery aneurysms. Um, so small percent of the visceral artery aneurysms, um, I think what you need to understand about these is that they can be bilateral, so if you do have, if you do see someone with one of these, they need to be followed over their lifetime because they can get uh, contralateral uh, artery aneurysms. They can be associated with hypertension, renal insufficiency, and other aneurysms. Um, and uh, management depends on where they're situated in terms of the renal artery. So, if they're obviously, if someone presents with a symptomatic aneurysm, they need to be repaired. So that's embolization to the, to the remainder of the kidney, dissection, or if they present with hypertension and a aneurysm, this is an indication for repair. Um, and then women anticipating pregnancy. And so operative repair, the, you can repair them in situ if it includes a main artery and the, and the anteriorly located branches. You have to involve your transplant surgeon and do ex vivo repair if you've got distal segments or within the parenchyma itself. These, these kidneys have to be removed, patched, and <coughs> replaced um, because with endovascular repair, you can jail some of the branches. And then obviously endovascular repair, there's, set, there's three types. Type one is the main renal artery. Type two is branch involvement so that if you, know, if you are very well skilled, you can do embolization or remodeling techniques, and then type three was interparenchymal, and that would include coil embolization.